When all is said and done, the deadly collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore could see insured losses between two and four billion dollars. One credit rating agency saying it could be the most expensive marine insured loss in history. But who will pay and how much depends on who you ask. President Biden, who is set to visit Baltimore Friday, vowed the federal government will pay. But Republicans in Congress say not so fast. Meanwhile, the owner and manager of the ship that crashed into the bridge are trying to escape some of the costs. Their joint filing uses a pre-Civil War provision in maritime law to limit their liability to the value of the vessel's remains. This would cap their expenses at just under $44 million. But the filing might not end up limiting the ship owner's liability after all. Instead, it serves another purpose, putting all the claims filed in one place. About 100 insurance companies are involved, which includes insurance for the boat, cargo, bridge itself, and even the Port of Baltimore. Those insurance companies will likely front the costs eventually, according to a legal analyst. Once an investigation is complete and they determine who is at fault, insurance companies will reportedly sue the responsible party in an attempt to recoup their losses. The ship's owner, who is based out of Singapore, argues they weren't previously aware of the vessel's mechanical issues that led to the crash. Meanwhile, the Biden administration already approved $60 million to help clear debris and rebuilding efforts. However, total reconstruction could be as high as $1.2 billion for the bridge alone. And the emergency funds the administration used is limited, meaning Congress would have to approve more funding to rebuild the bridge. Many Republicans, including former House Speaker Newt Gingrich, say it should not be the government's responsibility to pay, rather the insurance companies. Efforts to remove wreckage from the river are underway, and sonar images reveal there is still debris at the bottom of the waterway. Divers were swimming in virtual darkness, and cranes have lifted hundreds of tons of wreckage to clear the channel. But still, work remains. Only one of the three temporary channels for ships has reopened, and is a fraction of the depth of the former route. Maryland Governor Wes Moore says efforts will need to include more than just rebuilding. He's also focused on the victims' families and the long-term economic impact. Our work with these families does not end with recovery. Both federal and state partners are meeting with the families of the victims to offer them supports. Moore said this is not just about a bridge. It's about our nation's economy.